and welcome to The Short Stuff. I'm Josh Clark. There's Charles W. Chuck Bryant. There's guest producer Dave Kustan over there. And um, this is Short Stuff. So, giddy up. <laughs> giddy up, literally, mm -hmm. because we're going to go back to the Old West. The rootin' tootin' Old West. We're jumping in the old Wayback Machine. We're going uh -huh. to 1876. Like uh, Back to the Future 3. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. A movie I only saw once. That's all you need. Uh, some people love those. I didn't like the sequels. But we don't I have time for that. I never saw the second one. Okay, go. <laughs> you skipped, you did one and three? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I like odd numbers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's 1876, and there we're in San Antonio, Texas. Yep, there's no basement in the Alamo. There is not. And uh, the Alamo is quite tiny, actually. It really is. It's like the Mona Lisa of buildings. <laughs> That's right. Or the Josh and Chuck of podcasters. <laughs> That's right. People don't know we're only two feet tall. Yep. So uh, we are looking at, upon a scene. We're at a ranch, mm -hmm. and there's a man over there named John Warren Gates. Yes. And he is, they call him Bet a Million Gates, and we have just thrown some money down on a bet of whether or not this little wire pin he has mm -hmm. can hold in these bulls and cows and horses and these crazy longhorn steers, and my money is on no way, Gates, no way that little wire yeah. is going to hold these animals in. Yeah, and I mean, we put a significant amount of money down because we just printed it ourselves because it's 1876 in the Old West, and you can do that. That's right, 100 simoleons. But I bet against him as well, Chuck, and the reason why is because it's just a little, a little couple of things of wire with some barbs on it, and these are some angry steers, and what's more, he has a gaucho assistant swearing in Spanish at these um, these cows and uh, trying to get them riled up. And by goodness, we just lost our bet. I know. But it was quite a party. Mm -hmm. And we're hammered and we're going to go back to our canvas tent and sweat. Mm -hmm. I ate the worm. <laughs> so here's the deal. That story may or not uh, be not uh, true. May or be not true? <laughs> <laughs> mayor be not true. Your mayor. That's right. <laughs> I'm glad we leave stuff like this in. Yeah. That's what makes us us. So uh, we don't know if that's all true or not. It's a great story, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. But what is super true is that Bet a Million Gates was trying to drum up some uh, early press for this new fence made by a man named Joseph Glidden mm -hmm. that uh, the Native Americans called, well, some people called the thorny fences. The Native Americans called it, what, the devil's rope. Yeah, because they didn't like it, no. but we just call it barbed wire. Yep, barbed wire. And, um, and so Joseph Glidden didn't invent that stuff, although he did have a patent on what we, when you look at barbed wire, what you're looking at is the variety that Joseph Glidden came up with. But there are plenty of people who came up with their own version prior to him. And I was looking at like this list of them with pictures. Some of those are just vicious looking. Oh, I bet. Um, they're basically like, cut up razor blades stuck in wire. I mean, just horrible stuff. But what Glidden did was he he took a, a barb and he, he twisted it around a wire, and then he added a second wire, right. just a plain wire, to tw twist it around the first wire to hold the barb in place, keep it from sliding. But even more important than that, because it's pretty simple, and somebody probably would have come up with that sooner or later, was he patented it, and he invented a method of um, producing it, mass producing it. And brother, did he mass produce it? Yeah, I mean, before he he very brilliantly decided to keep those barbs in place, which was the key, mm -hmm. those cows would just go up and hoof them over to the side mm -hmm. and slip right on through and right. sneak out to the skating rink. Because they are, cows are well known as being among the smartest animals. Yes, and their hoofs are, you know, they can do very fine detailed work. Like an abacus work. That's right. So I believe before my dumb jokes, <laughs> you were saying how much he was pumping this wire out. Yeah, tell him. Uh, by 1880, his factory in DeKalb, Illinois, were turning out 263,000 miles of wire. Yes. And uh, Chuck, that is enough to circle the earth 10 times over. How many that's Big how, Macs? That's a trillion Big Macs <laughs> stacked end to end. Yeah, and this was a big deal. It wasn't just like, oh, he invented, he invented some stuff and it helped keep some cows in and now mm -hmm. we all use it and it's pretty right. neat. Like this changed the face of the American West along yeah. with other stuff. But it had, it had a big impact on 
the foundation and settling of the American West. Yeah, I mean, at, at least as much as like the locomotive, the telegraph, um, like it was an enormous invention, especially for something so simple, barbed wire. It's extremely simple. But up to this point, the Native Americans had been um, living nomadic existences, hunting buffalo, um, just basically moving around the Great Plains and the prairie for basically 15,000 years. That's right. Uh, w- uh, like European ancestry uh, whites had showed up, but the first ones that showed up basically said, hey, I think this is, I think you guys are on to something. I'm going to embrace this kind of free range stuff and I'm bringing cattle and sheep and all sorts of other animals, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to let them just graze wherever and just move them around as the weather permits. And that worked okay. But when barbed wire came along, all of a sudden these open, enormous, vast expanses suddenly became closed off. And what used to just be common property that belonged to everyone and no one, suddenly huge slices of it were being um, fenced off, literally. And that changed tens of thousands of years of tradition in 10 years, maybe less. Yeah. And here's the thing. It's not like this was the first fence in the West. There were, you know, they could build wood fences, but in the prairie states, they didn't have a ton of lumber. Uh, There weren't trees everywhere. Mm -hmm. Wooden fences are super expensive. Rock and stone walls, like, are you kidding me, to do for a whole farm? Super expensive and also scarce. But what barbed wire did is it uh, democratized it and made it super cheap or relatively cheap, I guess, Mm -hmm. compared to the other things. Yeah. And easy and fast to say, this is my area and you're not coming in and these cows aren't getting out. 